We're good. All right, we're going to call this meeting to order. If we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Scott, can you call the roll? Good evening, everybody. Uh, Mrs. Albright. Here. Mrs. Bell. Here. Mrs. Godfrey. Here. Mrs. Leone. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Mrs. Olson. Here. Mrs. Scott here. Mr. Strobel. Here. Thank you. Mr. Thompson. Mrs. Thompson, oh my gosh. Sarah. <laughs> okay. Okay, moving on to the superintendent's report. Dr. Cooper. Thank you, Madam President. I have a, a brief report this evening. Um, just a um, update on some of the activities participated in last week. The superintendent uh, high school had their unity day last Tuesday. Uh, the 16th. Um, it was great to be able to participate in some of the activities with the students. Also attended and provided opening remarks to the National Honor Society induction ceremony um, on that same evening and uh, attended the equity roundtable hosted by Mr. Flowers Wednesday evening via Zoom on the 17th. Uh, additionally, just um, some updates regarding uh, COVID and the reported cases and related quarantines. As reference on the district website and dashboard, uh, have been significantly less in the past two to three weeks, indicated that we have uh, mitigated what appeared to be an outbreak, in particular at the high school, about two to three weeks ago um, when we were experiencing a significant increase in cases. Um, uh, the next item I have is uh, on behalf of the uh, district administration and on behalf of the entire board here, I would like to uh, recognize Mr. Miller um, as his um, last meeting here with the board and recognize him for his years of service uh, between 2017 and 2021. And what we have, it's something that we do with all of our board members who um, had service to our um, district families and students and stakeholders is present him with a gift. Um, and thank him for his service. And then my final item is just um, wishing everyone in our, um, on our board and our learning community a uh, safe and happy fall break coming up. Um, that concludes my report, Madam President. Okay, thank you, Dr. Cooper. And thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, all right, so procedures for, pu for public participation. Okay, um, prepared statements, if you have one, um, are to be read to the board, um, and they should have a copy presented to the board president prior to their being addressed. Comments on agenda items will be made by rising and approaching the microphone, stating your full name and address, and signing in on the sheet provided. You'll be granted up to three minutes to address the board. Your three minute time limit will start when you begin to speak. When three minutes are over, you will be asked to be seated. Um, any item that is not on the agenda, as well as agenda items acted upon, comments will be made at the designated section at the <coughs> end of the agenda. And having said that. Um, Mr. Yeah. Can I add one thing? Um, when, yep. Just like for clarity for me and for those maybe in the audience. Mm -hmm. You have a five minute letter that you're reading and you're three minutes in. The other two minutes gets put into the meeting minutes. It's, so it's not that it maybe not get read, but it's not like we're cutting you off. It does get added. Right. It does get added. It just didn't get spoken. I just right. To, not, I don't know if everybody knows that or not. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and um, having said that, um, we have a presentations by the public on agenda items. Okay, seeing none. Announcements. Um, <coughs> agenda edits. 
we have a couple of agenda edits. Mr. Scott. <laughs> so I'm gonna, no, I'm just going to throw them out. Um, so under five, finance added consent. I have um, three things that we would like to add. All three were approved out of committee, out of the finance committee meeting, right, that happened right before this meeting. Um, so I would like to move to uh, vote to approve um, the addition of 5A2, which would be to approve the audit for year ending 2021 prepared by mailing, mailing accountants. 5A3, which would be a transfer of $1 million from general fund to the capital fund. And uh, 5A4, which would be approving contract with VBA, which uh, would be a new vision insurance provider for our staff, um, starting with open enrollment January 1, 2022. Um, do I need a motion and a second or just a vote? We will require a motion in a second. And okay. I will reiterate that the reason for these, the amendment to the agenda, is both the fact that these matters were just brought to the finan uh, finance committee this evening, and they also require action prior to next month's board meeting. Um, Correct. That you, you will need a, uh, a motion, a second, and the majority of the board to approve the agenda edits. And then following that, I would offer the public the opportunity to comment on any of those additional items. Fair, okay. So um, can, can I get a motion on, um, av on um, adding these to the agenda under sure. finance added? And do I have a second? Second. Ms. Bell, I mean Ms. Ms. Albright, <laughs> sorry about that. And, um, <laughs> um, and um, do you guys have any any questions about um, that weren't any of the, you that weren't at the finance meeting um, want to talk about it before we add them to the agenda? Or we can always talk about them when they when they come up in the agenda. Um, if you have no questions, um, can we uh, call for a vote, Mr. Scott? Mrs. Albury. Yes. Mrs. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Godfrey. Yes. Mrs. Leone? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Strober? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Olson? Yes. And um, as Mr. Subers um, said, um, since we did add some things to the agenda, is there anyone who would like to make a presentation on those added agenda items before we start the regular meeting? Okay, seeing none, moving on into <coughs> consent items. Did we do that right? Yes. Okay. Um, so, um, consent items. We have a, a, three A. Um, let's go with one through five. Let's start there. Mr. Strobel, I have a second. Second. Ms. Godfrey, questions, comments, concerns? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and vote on one through five. So just to be clear, we're going to 3A1 through 3A5? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mrs. Albright. <clears throat> yes. Mrs. Bell. Yeah. Mrs. Godfrey? Yes. Mrs. Leone? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Strobel? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Olson? Yes. Nine yes. Okay. Um, so the reason I did that is because number six the, um, is the or vote for the restructuring plan. Um, for the, that will impact the middle school, the intermediate center, and the primary center. Um, and depending on if the vote on that were to be no, there's a lot of other stuff that comes after that that we're not gonna vote on tonight. So, um, so. That's, that's the resolution. Yes, this is, this is the plan. So then we have to do that. nine first? Correct. Excellent. 
So we're going to do nine, and then we'll go, then we'll circle back to the rest of them. Did we ever get any um, definitive plans about what it would look like? How we would keep them separate? I just I'm trying to read it on my phone. Can we um, can we make the motion and then have that discussion? Just have a motion. Not yeah, correct. Yeah, but we can't talk about it until we make the motion. So, um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, so motion for um, um, 3A9, which would be for the school, the resolution for school reconfiguration. reconfiguration. Um, can I get a motion for that? Motion. Okay, a second? I'll second. Okay. Definitive, uh, definitive. Um, I want to know how they're going to be kept separate. Yep, yep, I, yep. I get you. I, At the yeah, middle it, school. Yeah. It, yeah. I want to. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I know, I know it's hard to speculate, but I, I need to know exactly how they're not going to be interacting. Yeah. Yeah, I, right I, I can, I can share that, uh, Ms. Albright. The reconfiguration of the middle school. On a lower level, as, as we indicated before, it would be a lower house and an upper house with the uh, five, six would be on, on the lower portion of the middle school. Uh, grade seven and eight would be housed in the uh, top floor of the middle school. Um, in particular, um, there'll be a fifth and sixth grade split. So on the bottom floor, all of the fifth grade classes will be in one section of the bottom floor. All of the sixth grade classes will be in the other section of the bottom floor and 7th and 8th will mirror that on the, up, on the top floor. The, as far as uh, students transitioning uh, between their core classes, um, there will be very minimal interaction because they're housed in that one particular section of the building. Um, they will be traveling to and from their, and this is 5th uh, grade I'm assuming primarily is, is the interest here, will be traveling to and from their related studies or encore courses. Um, they will be escorted by um, their uh, teachers to and from those uh, courses um, using uh, traffic patterns that will minimize their contact with the students on the upper floor in the seventh and eighth grade. Obviously because the location of some of those classrooms or the related studies in a building uh, may be some crossover, however, will be minimized by the teachers navigating with the students. In regards to that, when they do transition up to like the upper floor, or is there gonna be an increase in staff in the hallways just to make sure everything's good? Well, we, we, we do ask for our professional staff to um, have a presence in the hallway between transitions at their door. So there are um, seeing the kids going to and from the classes. Because okay. a fifth grader, they're, they're tiny. I have a fourth grader, mm -hmm. so I know how little they are and how intimidating that can be to be around those older kids. Where the, where the fifth grade is located <coughs> in the bottom portion of the building, there is one stairwell um, that's adjacent to the cafeteria in particular. Uh, which obviously, you know, to and from that area, it's a very small section of the upper floor that they will be navigating. Most of the seventh and eighth grade classes are on the, the uh, Weavertown Road side of the building. The related studies courses are primarily on the front side of the building, if you will. Um, the way the building's laid out, the front is actually the back and the back is the front. So then my second question then is if we do find out, we say this gets approved and we do find out that there are issues, is there a way that we can keep them completely separate if there are, I'm just saying if there is, or what can we do to fix that problem if there were to be issues? Yeah, with, with their traveling to and from, where the impact comes more significantly than not is to and from the related studies and that's why uh, working with um, the middle school administration, uh, Mr. Towers and Ms. Dombrowski, in identifying traffic patterns in uh, particular stairwells uh, that are accessible <coughs> by just a certain uh, lower house grade levels versus upper house grade levels. Um, to, to, to completely mitigate that interaction, 
due to the building layout is, I can't say for sure it's, it's possible because you're gonna have some of that transition um, to those Encore classes, but can be um, minimized by the hallways that they are, or the stairwells that they are using to get to those places. For example, the gymnasium, uh, the music areas, the technology ed areas, um, their computer class areas, the cafeteria area. And then I know that I mentioned last time about gym for the fifth graders. Not gym, recess, sorry. Yes. Are they, how, how's that working? Well, there will be some additional time um, built in schedule uh, for recess. One of the other things, too, that we are looking at is an increased amount of uh, time for physical education for our fifth graders as well. Um, right now, they have it currently one time a week uh, for, I believe, 42 or 45 minutes. Uh, we're looking to increase that for three times in a six-day cycle. Uh, so it'll give some natural, more natural um, physical activity time and then to complement that with some uh, recess time on those off days during what is uh, called I IHT or study hall time where they get some a natural break in there. Is it possible to have a fifth and sixth grade bus and a seventh and eighth grade bus? At this point, without, I believe, significantly increasing your cost for transportation uh, might be difficult. Uh, one of the things that I have asked um, Mr. Towers and Mr. Dombrowski to look at is uh, seating arrangements on those buses, um, uh, lower house, front, upper house, in the back, just to have some type of a separation for the students, um, assigning seats to, obviously, the buses. Any other questions before we vote? Okay. Go ahead. All right, so we're voting on 389 right now. Yes. Okay. This is all right. Mrs. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Godfrey. Yes. Mrs. Leone. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Scott, yes. Mr. Strobel. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Olson. Yes. Nine yes. So before we move on, I just wanted to say I know that um, rightly so, um, the questions that um, were raised were mostly about the fifth grade um, because that's the biggest change and um, you know there are, there are valid concerns with how we implement that. Um, but um, you know, um, a lot of us who've been on the board for a while, um, one of the things that animated us um, to, to consider running for the board was when we lost, um, when we used to have full day kindergarten, we had it for what, seven, six years, maybe? Yeah, five or six. Yeah, and, um, and um, you know, my, my, my children are a little older and uh, they both benefited from being able to have full day kindergarten and um, it was something very important to me to be able to continue to offer that to Boone students. And so I am very happy that that is <coughs> happening again. Yes. I agree. Both, both of my children took full advantage of full day kindergarten. You can really see the big difference. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're the only school district going down this path. There's many other districts out there that have that age group together. So oh, it's not oh, with uncharted. the with the with the with the middle school, it's yeah. Not an uncharted path. Yeah. Um, yep. Okay. Um, so now, as part of that resolution, it will. Um, necessitate some changes um, and um, they are part of 3A, 6, 7, and 8. So can I have a motion for the three of those? Mr. Strobel, can I have a second? Can we vote on them separately, We can, yeah. Let's, so let's, uh, can, can Ms. Mr. Strobel, would you be okay with amending your motion for just um, 3A, 6? Sure. Okay, um, so 3A, 6. A second, a second. Okay. Um, Who's the second? Ms. Godfrey. Um, do we have any comments, questions, concerns on um, the organizational structure? I do have a question. So, okay. I guess 
you know, the job description for the principal typically is to run the day-to-day -day of that school. Mm -hmm. Why do we have another person in that job description for um, the chief academic officer? It says that one of their job descriptions is to do the day-to-day. -day. So why do we have two people doing the, the, a lot of the same things? I mean, I didn't get the full job descriptions like I had asked for, so I can't, I don't know what the other, you know, what it actually says in the principal's job description. But I know that is a role of the job description of a principal. I just feel like there's a lot of overlap between the principals of each school and the chief, chief academic officer. I, the uh, job descriptions of the, uh, that were request, requested of the cabinet level and the director level positions were all shared when the update was sent two weeks ago. So that of the ones we're voting on. No, it was all together. Um, it was all one document. PDF had all the directors and all of the cabinet level positions: chief academic for, officer, for CFO. Job descriptions yes. Every single one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you missed that, I apologize. It was included as an attachment on an update. <coughs> yeah, I didn't see that. The only ones that were not included in there were the um, principals, which was not requested. I had. Um, but it still comes to my question of why the chief academic officer is needed when we have principals for each school. Chief academic officer coalesces uh, the, the curriculum instruction assessment from a systemic standpoint across the district. So what's the job then of the assistant or the superintendent? Um, Ms. Mr. Hurley's position is focused on pupil services, administrative services, outside of the realm of curriculum. I just think we're adding a lot of administrative jobs and adding a lot of extra salaries and money that we're gonna have to pay for. I could share with the board that we have not increased any administrative positions uh, the administrative positions have stayed at 19 as they were when I came on board they have just been repurposed and reallocated to fit different responsibilities and roles within our system of delivering services to our students and families if I may you already explained that to us when we, were, when we had some different changes coming about at the end of the year right Correct. That was that was discussed. I mean, what what positions? I didn't see anything. I mean, at least it was explained to us. Like maybe perhaps she was not here that night, but it was explained to us. I also want to make a more comment in regards to like the overlap. Um, each building has their responsibility, and this it appears to me. I may be wrong, but it appears to me that it creates that consistency and continuity throughout the district that everybody's on the same page. Versus they're only focused on their individual building. They might separate from another, from another building having somebody that has that part of their job description wouldn't be the only thing they're doing. It may create some continuity between the two buildings. That's why I, when I look at, look at that, that's what I saw. So we're not spending any extra money? We're actually saving approximately $40,000 by this restructure. <coughs> um, the position that you will see that is not being uh, replaced per se is the director of elementary ed slash continual learning which is being absorbed with the elementary principal slash supervisor of learning innovation uh, they've been combined together yeah I knew that okay. thank you you're welcome okay. any other questions on, on this before we vote Mr. Scott, Scott yeah. <laughs> Uh, 386, right? Yeah. We passed on the other. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Albright. Yes. Mrs. Bell. Yeah. Mrs. Godfrey. Yes. Mrs. Leone. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Sterling. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Olson. Yes. Nine back. Okay. Um. Before I go go on, do do um, does anybody have an objection to doing the next two jobs um, together? <coughs> okay, um, so 
Um, moving on to <coughs> consent item 3A, 7, and 8. Um, do I have a motion for those? I'll make that motion. That was you, right? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, I get a second. Thank you. I'll second. Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller. Any questions about the job descriptions for Chief Academic Affairs Officer and um, Elementary Principal slash Supervisor of Learning Innovation? <coughs> okay, with no questions, can I get a vote? Uh, Mr. Scott, yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Leone? Yes. Mrs. Godfrey? Yes. Mrs. Bell? Yes. Mr. Strobel? Yes. Mrs. Albright? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Olson? Yes. Nine yes. All right. So, I'm sorry, everybody. Normally, consent is a little easier to get through. So now we, we're going to do 3A, uh, 10 through 12. Can I get a motion for those three? Ms. Godfrey, can I get a second? Second, Mrs. Bell. Ms. Bell. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, any comments, questions, concerns? Okay. Um, can I get a vote, Mr. Scott? I do know your name. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Olds, uh, Mrs. Uh, Thompson. Yes. Mr. Strobel. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mrs. Leone. Yes. Mrs. Godfrey. Yes. Mrs. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Albright. Yes. Mrs. Olson. Yes. Okay. Um, under um, personnel consent, 4A, 1 through 4. Can I get a motion for those? Mr. Strobel and Mrs. Leone, second. Any comments, questions, concerns under personnel? Can I get a vote? Off at that struggle on that. Okay, <laughs> Mrs. Albright. Yeah. Mrs. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Leone. Yes. Mrs. Godfrey. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Struggle. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Olson. Yes. Nine yes. Okay. Um, moving on to finance with the added items that we did at the, with the agenda edits we did at the beginning. It'll be for 5A, 1 through 4. <coughs> Any motion for those? So moved. Mr. Mr. Miller and second Mrs. Godfrey, is that what I heard? Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, so we didn't get a chance to talk about it before. So um, the, um, the um, audit was prepared for us by Mailey uh, um, and um, was shared with the board. Um, and they, um, a representative from Mailey came to speak to the finance committee today. Um, there were no findings this year um, of concern, which is good. Um, and um, that's the item, that's item 5A2 up for discussion. Um, um, as we said, you know, we do have a lot of capital projects going on and uh, there, it was um, recommended out of committee to transfer $1 million from the general fund to the capital fund. Understanding that at any time we can vote again to move it back into the general fund um, if it hasn't been if it hasn't been um, um, used for a project at any time, I guess. Um, and um, what the other thing that was presented to the committee was um, to change our, um, a recommendation to change our vision insurance company from the current one, which is Davis Vision, to VBA. Um, no, um, no, 
additional cost. It, um, it currently, Davis is not is a, is free for the employee. Um, the new the new system would be better coverage, still free to the employee, but offer them the opportunity to add a spouse or dependents for um, a, um, for a small amount each, um, each pay. Um, and that would be their choice. Um, um, and the insurance coverage is better. So um, that was the recommendation coming out of finance that we approved that. So um, uh, any of those things. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, and I, didn't, I didn't ask a question earlier. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Um, on the vision, by, yep. when, when adding somebody, is that a, are they paying for a percent of that person or 100% of the person? Is there an increase to the school to add, if they add a spouse or something like that? Is there that is a good question. That expense? There's no increase to the school. I'm still paying the same dollar amount. It's a little bit of a very small amount, less than what we're paying now. I would give them that money, and then they would buy up the difference between that plan and whatever plan they want. And is there, like, would 100 people get on? I mean, no, there's no way that by adding, by giving the opportunity to add a spouse, which I think is a great idea, by the way, but is there any way that we can increase our expense by, by offering that? No, I mean, we've got 237 employees that are currently taking the vision, or they're opting out for the other benefit within the contractual thing. So either way, it's not, we're already saving, I mean, I know it's incremental, but we're saving $400. So I would have to have a lot of people jump on more than our employee base okay. to do this. Any, any other comments, questions, concerns about any of this stuff under finance? <laughs> Mr. Scott. Mrs. Aubrey. Mrs. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Godfrey. Yes. Mrs. Leone. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Strobel. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Olson. Yes. And yes. Okay. Um, if we could um, have a motion for programmatic consent 6A, 1 and 2, and then we'll discuss 2. Um, um, can I get a motion for all of 6? Six? 6A, 1 and 2? Ms. Thompson, can I get a second? Ms. Godfrey. Um, anybody have any questions or concerns about the, the, at the travel for music in the parks before we move on to the other thing? Um, Ms. Haynes. Could you pull up? Yeah. Um, so I know that's hard to read. But um, so right now, um, Ms. Ms. Albright and um, I think Ms. Bell and maybe Mr. Miller also, but Ms. Albright brought it up at the last meeting that um, she wanted us to maybe try <coughs> to come up with a different way of dealing with contact tracing. So what, ha um, so what happens right now? is um, we go right off of the PA Health Action Network, what their recommendations are, um, which state when it comes to contact tracing, um, with, st in, with a student, if, if they're both masked, if they are within three feet or less from an infected person for more than 15 minutes, they are contact traced and are recommended for quarantine. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so um, um, we looked at what some of the other schools in our area are doing, and uh, um, I wouldn't say a majority, but a plurality of, of schools in the area are doing what we have recommended up here, which would be that students, um, as long as they are wearing masks and they're wearing them properly, um, they will be not be asked to be quarantined, even if they are within three feet or less of uh, another child who's infected. Um, I don't know, Ms. Albright did, um, <coughs> I, we, so this was sent around to the board to ask if anybody wanted us to vote on anything different than this, and I, I got no, no answer, so I'm assuming that this is kind of what you were looking for. 
Okay. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Yeah. And um, so, you know, what this would mean if this is what we, this is what, if this is what we vote for, like if it, um, we, we know that there is a chance that starting December 4th, students might not be wearing masks. Um, barring any, and you know, there could be a, you know, there could be new guidance that comes out at that point as far as what we call quarant, what we what we label quarant needing quarantine and whatnot. But um, so if kids are wearing, if kids aren't wearing masks, we go we go back to, like, if they're within six feet. I think is that correct? Is that is that correct? If, if, if both children are not wearing masks, as if if they're within six feet of each other, they would be quarant. Right. And um, so that would so when when kids aren't wearing masks to school, you know, the, um, we'd we'd have to be looking at that six feet rule again, or be looking for new guidance from the state. Um, yes, I understand. Yeah. That. Okay. How soon, if they get a negative test result, how soon are they allowed to come back? That would that shouldn't change. That didn't. Is that correct? We didn't change it. So five days. Is that right? If a child is if a child is quarantined, five days after they came in contact. So say that first they say they came out on a Monday that there was somebody on oh Thursday, and they went and got tested right away. They could come back. Do you get what I'm saying? No, are you talking about quarantine? Yeah. They, to answer your question, they, if they were identified as a close contact by CDC regulations, which is what DOH is currently following, uh, after seven days, they, they may make a negative Even if they test negative after five? After between five and seven days, and that our nurses can speak better for this, but between five and seven days, um, they can test, um, and then they can come back. They can come back as soon as it's negative? As soon as they're tested. Okay, thank you. So, um, you know, the the what I left that meeting with my marching orders I thought were that um, we were looking to um, reduce the number of kids quarantined not to change what happens if a child is identified we're looking to have fewer kids identified as needing quarantine not to change the rules for anybody who is identified as needing quarantine just to reduce the number of kids in general that's that's what I that's what this would do it wouldn't change it if a child is still identified as needing quarantine with this rule change it wouldn't change how long they would need to be home okay let me ask the, the definition of how Dana Boone um, defines six feet because I know it's from the middle of the desk to the middle of the desk and our our kids are three feet apart middle of the desk to middle of the desk so how are you how is Dan Boone saying three feet not oh. six feet sorry three feet. but that's only if you're not wearing masks if kids are wearing oh you mean like once we get once we're without masks we and so that 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 uh ruling came out I, I didn't try to address that with this I figured there could be a chance that we could get new guidance which would mean like putting a lot of effort into coming up with rules having to do with what we do when kids are in the classroom without masks was kind of, so so we, right. I, we're going to have to look at it again is what I'm saying because I thought that there was a good chance we would get new guidance and so if I put a lot of effort into coming up with some new rules it might be all for no reason so I didn't I didn't I didn't look into it Right now, I think that the classroom, like last year, we did really look at six feet being the ideal. We started, I believe, looking at three feet being the ideal, at least, at well, least three feet. Yeah. Really feet. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> and that, that's my where. Thing is that if my kid's sitting at their desk, um, like, I mean, in my school, I get my kids up for 15 minutes. They can go to the partners for kids, I sit back down because that's, that's how we play. Right. Them. And then, you know, they don't get quarantined. Right. That's 
And that's the way it would be now, but as far as like when we, when on the 6th, when we come back to school, if, there, if there's no mask requirement, you know, we do have a meeting that day. Um, so, I mean, we might, we, we're gonna have, we'll probably have to revisit it. Deborah, that's just a question. So if, if they're 14 minutes, they get up, it's not 15 cumulative, it's 15. According to our nurse, it is not cumulative. Oh, okay. It's per time. So I just have to get them up and move them. Yeah. Actually, that's not right. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. I think that's right. right. It's cumulative. It's cumulative. Technically, it is. But yeah. that's no, I mean, it changes every week. It, but you can it make it anything it. you want. You can yeah, make it yeah, anything, yeah, anything yeah. you want. Okay. Okay. How many cases have we actually had that's been transferred in the school that we know of? That's a hard question to ask. Yeah. Uh, to know, answer, to answer. Just, I'm sorry. I know, but I mean, <clears throat> it, has it been a good portion of kids that are sitting next to each other that are? Do you get what I'm saying? How would you know? Like, that's yeah. that's yeah. difficult yeah. to challenge. Yeah. I do with that in my work. I mean, yeah. people say they got something at my work, but the reality is they were just at Wawa, they were just at the. Yeah. You no, know, it's 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 tough. And it and you know, th I guess there are some that you can that you can point to where, um, in within the sports realm, you know, where you can be pretty sure that you know. This, these couple of kids got it, and then like seven, day, ten days later, another couple of kids in the same sport got it. You know, I mean, but but still, you can't. No, I know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's very prevalent that we're seeing that. That's all. These are, these like are. from the same class. Like I know he said there was an outbreak in a high school. Yeah. So that's related to saying. related to sports. That's right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's, yeah. And, that's, and that's. I know it's a difficult thing to yeah. try to figure out. I get it. I think, I think yeah. overall, it's a positive change in the right direction in terms of we're going to look at keeping kids in school, trying to lessen the number of children that are being quarantined. So Absolutely, this is step one, and then two, we're, you know, we're trying to follow those guidelines, and they're all over the place. But this is us going against those to make it better for how many kids get quarantined, and then in the next few weeks, depending upon where the masks end up going, how long it takes for that, I think we can adjust and pivot at that point based on what we're seeing from the CDC and from the different places. This is a definite improvement to try and lessen the number of kids that need to be quarantined mm -hmm. because they are wearing their masks and they're wearing their property. They're doing, yeah. they're doing the things they said they're supposed to do. So right. there's some good things there. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a positive direction. Okay. Step, or positive steps. Okay. I, I, I do want to I do want to share that not all the quarantines are related to school quarantines. That's true. Right. Um, you know, included in the update I think last week. Uh, with the data, and I'll use this as an example of the 17, approximately 70 quarantines last week. 30 were related to school, 40 were home quarantines related to um, infections that had happened in the home and students being quarantined uh, due to that close contact. So it's not always related to just school contact. Any other? Uh, comments before we roll? So how does this also affect the bus? Um, masked, so we're good. Okay, so there shouldn't be any more buses? Not, not related to buses, no. That That's my understanding, right? Yep. Uh, that, that, that would be correct. Okay. We any Any other... Concerns we want to talk about before we go. Can I just ask one question mm -hmm. on the health and safety plan? Mm -hmm. um, so I know it says that. Let me get down to it. Hold on. And it's not related to quarantine. Okay. Which which letter or is it uh, or what page? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it was in regards to. Uh, the school being a possible vaccine host. What? If deemed. Possible what? Oh, here. Okay. Um, number G, or letter G. It says um, that Daniel Boone Area School District continues to communicate local vaccine opportunities to staff, but then it says that above that, the district may serve as a vaccination host if called upon. Mm -hmm. the state. By the state. By the state, yeah. Doesn't mean the kids have to get it. No. 
just means that it could be available to us, right? Yeah, and uh, as I, and my understanding, um, you know, when we wrote this, we didn't know what was going to be happening. We didn't know if we were going to be told by the state if we had to hold um, a clinic, but we haven't been, and we haven't. So we're not going to unless something from the state says otherwise. No, uh, we have no plans to, okay. and all. you know, and um, so my, the the way that the um, we're required to give people information, and like if you look at our COVID page on the website, it just has like a list of if you got this zip code, go look go mm -hmm. look for a site, you know, and and it, that that meets that requirement. We're we're giving we're giving people the information, but yeah, if it's that's only if the State Department of Health or FEMA. Or I mean, or you know, but that hasn't happened. We didn't know when we started this whole process where where we would be and what was going to be asked of us. So okay, I'm just making sure that's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, get a vote. Okay, six, eight, one, and two. Yep. Mrs. Aubrey. Yeah. Mrs. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Godfrey. Yes. Mrs. Leone. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Strobel. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Olson. Yes. Nine yes. Okay, moving on to personnel added consent. 7A1 through 3. Can I get a vote for that? I mean, I get a motion for that, sorry. Ms. Godfrey, can I get a second, Mr. Strobel? Um, comments, questions, concerns on personnel added consent? Um, can I get a vote? Sure, Mrs. Aubrey. Mr. Scott, I'm looking on my phone. Can you call me last, please? <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay. This is, now I, I, know I get it. This I'm is trying that. to see no, is this I'm thing. also saying this right now because it used to be that it got rotated. And, and, and it always, it's always the same order, so I'm just throwing that out. Okay, Mrs. Bell. Yeah. Mrs. Scott. It's only a day. Okay. Um, Mrs. Sorry, Leone. Yeah. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Scott, yes. Mr. Stroll. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Olson. Yes. And Mrs. Albert. Yes. Oh, that worked out well. Nine yeses. Okay, and so um, just let me uh, say under administration, under three, one, one and two, um, as part of our reorganization, um, we have just voted for um, Ms. Angela Owens to be our new uh, Chief Academic Affairs Officer, and she is here. Congratulations. And uh, uh, Mrs. Hef Mrs. Hefter is not here, but she will be um, um, the elementary principal for the primary center, which will now be um, uh, kindergarten and first grade, and will also serve as a supervisor of learning and innovation. And, uh, um, has been um, one of our administrators for a long time and um, I'm looking forward to seeing what she does in that position. So I just wanted to say something because I saw that Mrs. Owens was here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so moving on to old business, um, and 8A1. Can I get a motion for that? I'll make that motion. Mr. Scott, can I get a second? I will second that. I never do that. Um, so, um, I know. <laughs> Um, can I get um, if if there are no comments on the on the minutes, we can vote. Sure. Is that yeah? Mrs. Okay. Bell. Yeah. Mrs. Godfrey. Yes. Mrs. Leone. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. <laughs> Bad news. <laughs> Mr. Strobel. Yes. I didn't go to the bar before this. I promise. <laughs> Mrs. Thompson. Mrs. Yeah. Thank you. Mrs. Olson? Yes. And then Mrs. Albright? Yes. Okay. Nine if you minutes. fix my computer, I'd be happy to vote. <laughs> um, so um, under new business, we have none. Is that right? Yes. Um, okay. So um, 
time for presentation by the public on issues. Do we have anybody who'd like to speak? <sighs> I need you to give your street address. You don't have to give the number, just the street. I'm on Pearl Street. In okay. Pearl. Today, um, actually, I wonder if you really talk to schools in the in the, in the area. Because today, I had a very enlightening conversation with a board member from Queen Valley School District. I was told that healthy students are not quarantined at all. I was also told that parents could sign the form. Um, their mask exemption form instead of a doctor because doctors will not sign the forms for fear of losing their license. Um, I was also told that medical information is not needed. Again, can you please do the right thing? Let me quote President Ronald Reagan. We the people tell the government what to do. It doesn't tell us. We the people are the driver. The government is the car and we decide where it should go and by what, by what route and how fast. Our Constitution is a document in which we, the people, tell the government what, is it, what it is allowed to do. As I am sure you are all aware that you have been enforcing an illegal mandate and you are breaking the law, continuing with illegally masking our children. You need to apologize to our children for this abuse that you put them through. You need to take action now to resolve the unlawful enforcement. By taking steps now, you will more than likely prevent lawsuits and save money on legal fees, which I know uh, Dr. Cooper has firsthand with litigation from parents for uh, transgender students in Boyer Town. Um, we the people are telling you that the mask mandate ends now. You have not listened to the parents which we have been right all along. You've given BS responses to our questions, such as, please look at the last response we gave you. Your entire role in this situation has been an epic fail. We the people demand the immediate resignation of Julia Olofsson. Your services are no longer wanted as you are not following the law and doing what is best for the students of this district. Turn off your mic, get up, and walk away now. Ma'am, can I just ask you a question? What, do you, what, what are we doing that's illegal? We're following the you're, state you're guidelines. It's illegal. Down. From the very beginning, I'm just trying to have a conversation with you. Why is it illegal? It's, it's, been illegal. Illegal. it's been illegal since day one. Did you look up don't engage. I know you don't. They are mandates, but, but no, you're looking at it. So you, you made a comment about me last time you were here, so I, I don't know what you're, you're doing that for. You and I are not having issues, but I'm just saying, we're following the state mandate. Well, mandate it's no. illegal. It has been so the, governor is illegal. the Supreme Court of the state said that yeah. it is Truth. illegal Truth. from the beginning. Truth. Now, you're a lawyer, right? You have a law, you yeah. have a law degree? Sure. Did you look into it? Yeah, we're fully aware of the situation. That it's illegal, correct? No. That it was illegal from yeah. day one. I don't finish. It's currently enforceable. It's enforceable until December 4th. The automatic supersede is applied to the Commonwealth Court decision once the uh, Secretary of Health appealed that decision. So the, the order remained in, for, in force. The Commonwealth right Court has. You do realize that. I'm just telling Twin you. Twin Valley, they don't. Please do. Please look up. Please do what you said. You don't answer questions, honestly, ever. You're snarky. You don't answer questions. So then you wonder why I get up here and I act like this. Please do the right thing. We've been begging for months. Do the right thing. And you can't. None of you. You can't. And you know what? Parents don't come to the school board meetings because this is how you treat parents. And you know what? We pay taxes. We have a right to be here. We have a right to say when we think that you are 
wrong. Get up. You're done, lady. Ma'am, ma'am, can I just say something? Why, when are we, when are we showing you any disrespect? You don't answer the questions. You don't answer the questions. Answer the questions. No, no, but I mean, we haven't shown you disrespect. We haven't. Previous boards would talk to me when I was sitting out there and tell me to shut up, stay yeah. out of it, and all that stuff. I don't think we've ever told you yeah. that. I get we respect your opinion, but don't, I mean, please don't say that we're like trying to disrespect you. I, I, sat with, I sat with the gentleman back here um, during the election thing. I, think, I thought we had some pretty good give and take back and forth. I mean, we respected each other. We might have either different opinions or just something that has to happen this way. But I don't think we've disrespected you. I don't certainly don't think Julie has disrespected you. So I'm sorry if you feel that way. But she we're parents so I she agree. doesn't answer the questions. On on the website, they're all snarky answers. No, I tried to ask, like Mrs. Leone asked, is there gonna be a, a vaccine clinic here? And she's like, Oh, we're not health professionals. We don't do that. No. Answer the question. But then, they take off the mask. But there you know, isn't, you're have a there isn't a vaccine. I mean, I, we spoke about that. I mean, unless somebody tells us we have to have vaccines here, well, God, the school's not in the business of giving out vaccines. I, I said that from the beginning. I mean, I, I've always, I still believe that. I mean, I, I be against it. I mean, if we like force I, I would it. hope so. I well, yeah, but I mean, there's a difference between offering and trouble. But you know what, though? Here's the deal. So there are schools all over the country that have had these vaccine clinics and kids have gotten inoculated if you want to call it that because it's not, not a vaccine no 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 they have been in louisiana and colorado they've here. gotten they've gotten the so-called vaccine without parental consent and you know here. what I think no, I think we're gonna let I think we're gonna let Miss Markle have the last word on that. Okay. And I, I think we're I think we're I think we're Thank we're you. done with the conversation. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Can, can I just mention something about you real quick? Is that mm -hmm. okay, Julie? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, in the, the Supreme Court ruling, it did say ab initio. That's what she was trying to explain. That means from the beginning. So technically, if we got rid of the mask mandate right now, there's nothing they can do. Because it is ordered, I get it that it's ending the fourth, but you can't sue somebody for a Supreme Court ruling that has been deemed unconstitutional, ab initio, from the beginning. I'm, I understand that, I'm just- We have a solicitor that we're gonna follow. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's why we but hired, he, he hired I was just solicitor. giving him the verbiage that it was written in that Supreme Court ruling. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, it's a good, it's a good again, Mr. Supers is right to your right. I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna fight somebody with the law, but I mean, I don't think we're- We have plenty of constitutional lawyers. I just, listen, I just want to, we have, I mean, we've been always respectful. I mean, the reason, and I totally get when people have different opinions. I totally get it, because it's not, I have three kids in this school, so, I think respectful is the least of, I mean, I tried not to be, of course. Oh, I'll shut up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to, be, to be honest, I... Thank you, everyone, for attending tonight's yeah. conferences. They have now ended. Everyone, please be safe. I guess my three minutes are up. Um, so, some of, the other, some of the other board members have come to me privately and um, asked me, um, why I haven't asked uh, the folks that are here uh, to leave um, when they've been abusive to the board or to the staff or to me or whatever. And what I've told them is I truly, truly, truly believe that it is your right to say whatever you want when you come up to that mic. I also believe that you know you should be respectful of the time of the people up here and just speak for three minutes. But I, I, I honestly, honestly don't don't care what you say. It's it's like it's it's like um, you can you know this is part of us. You know we're here to listen during that time, and so I don't advocate to kick anyone out of the room for being abusive. Um, for you know, uh, you know, no, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna itemize the things that people have said to us since the beginning of the school year because some of the people who've said them are in this room right now, and will think I'm trying to, I'm trying to um, call them out, and I'm not. Um, but um, you know, 
you're, you're given a lot more free reign to speak to us how you feel you have the right to speak to us and a, than a lot of other school boards um, in a lot of other school districts. And it's, and it's because of my firm belief that that, that is your time at that, at that night. Um, I don't have to run it that way. I can be more, I can be more, uh, I can cut you off sooner when, when you insult us. I, I, would be, I would be firmly within my rights to do so, but I don't because I think this is your time. And um, the rest of the board sometimes feels that, you know, maybe, maybe some of the folks here feel that maybe they don't agree with that. Um, but, but as long as I'm sitting here, that's the way it's going to be. And uh, so um, it was, it, you know, if anybody wants to think that, you know, I'm not listening or I want to silence anyone, that's, that's, that's something you're putting on me. That's not something I'm putting out there into the world. So next person who would like to speak. Daniel Tagnall, Gallup Drive, Birthboro. So the, as far as the offer to become a station for vaccinations, I think is absolutely ridiculous. If that were to ever come about, just as ridiculous as the surveys that are offered to these young kids that imply CRT. Two months ago, I asked the principal at the primary center about the busing rules for, uh, the bus rules about masking in the event of an emergency evacuation. The kids who are mask exempt are exempt for a reason. So what is the plan to evacuate these children? Are you going to deny them that safety? Or will somebody stay behind with these scared kids? Or are my kids gonna be left alone? I need to know because my kids are exempt for a reason. I'm not planning them for a mask. Also, the how we are notified about quarantine needs to be improved because you guys said about five days after contact with the negative test they can go back to school. Halloween night at 9 19 p.m. I get a phone call from Mrs. Hepter saying that my second grader had to quarantine because her last contact was October 27th. My daughter had no symptoms. So what are you going to do about asymptomatic children who aren't sick? What is the rule for that? And also the kids who are, I've noticed, as far as the primary center, I can't speak for the other grade levels, but I've noticed at the primary center that children who are not masked, there are class pictures going around of all the kids who are masked, but any students who are not masked, they are not being referenced and being praised for their hard work, their pause recognition or anything like that. So I think that's being very discriminatory. Thank you. Anyone else? Opportunity 
to read in the mornings if they want to read the Bible. Are we doing anything in this area? Right now, that's all I'm about to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is this your first um, board mem meeting that you're coming to? No, it's your last Okay, so you know that um, there will be the answers will be put on the website um, yeah, within a couple a days. Time time, not <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. And if you, um, you know, you can come talk to me, or I can come talk to you, and you can give me your email. But if you want me to send you answers to yours directly, I can do that. Okay. If that's easier. Anyone else? Based on what happened earlier in the meeting with the, uh, the change of the uh, quarantine plan, I just want to give you some insight on what actually happened with the quarantine plan. Uh, my oldest has been sent home seven or eight times since school reopened last year, three times this year, three times in five weeks this year. Two of the times he was not in close contact with the student that was sent. And that had COVID. So it is complete and utter garbage the way it's run. The one time he wasn't even in school because he got sent home for his second time of the year. His grade suffered that week because this year it's not geared towards homeschooling or virtual schooling, even though it's an option, it's not geared towards it. And I could see his grades drop that week. Then a day and a half after, I get a call saying he's, it's an open. I ask him, were you in close contact? No, I wasn't even in school that day because I was home from the previous quarantine. So the system that is set up right now that is going to continue and frankly get worse because it's going to be six feet uh, because people aren't going to be wearing masks is going to still be garbage. It is utter garbage. And my boys are suffering. I'm sure other parents kids are suffering because of sending healthy kids home from school. Where other school districts in Valley does not send healthy kids home from school. Somebody's sick, they can stay home. Parents can make the decision, hey, maybe my kid has a my kid has a temperature or whatever other sign, we're gonna stay home for a couple days. If they if they are actually COVID positive, they should stay home but healthy children should not be sent home because of the disease they do not have. True. That's absurd. And this school year, my kids' grades have been suffering because frankly, I believe they were, two of the three times they were sent home were after I showed up at the school board meetings. And since he was not in close contact those two times, what am I supposed to believe? So I think that's got to be changed. It's got to be fixed. And you're responsible for <coughs> fixing it and giving these kids an education and getting kids sent home for a week at a time is not giving them the education that the tax dollars are, are paying for. <coughs> It's 
it's no coincidence or it's not foreign knowledge to some of you that I'm a Christian, so a lot of what it is that I do, I, I do it out of love. So I'm not here to insult you or bring you any trouble. Um, that's actually the complete opposite of what I'm doing. There has been a fire lit under every single one of us by the grace of God, demanding that justice and righteousness be restored in our communities and schools. What you're feeling and what I'm feeling, what we're all feeling, is the move of God. I will not accept complacency, lack of judgment, unrighteousness, and is calling forth leaders who are willing to take a stand for the truth. Each of you has been blessed and appointed by God to be in the seat you are today. He saw something in every single one of you and knew that you were the best man and woman for the job. You hold unique gifts and talents that are woven into you from birth. You are loved and called by the Almighty, which is awesome. He has granted you grace and an opportunity to turn back to Him and rule justly, which I personally think is a blessing. When we are undeserving, He still loves us. We, the parents, ask that you do the right thing. As your constituents, we will be here by your side to bring you accountability because we're not your enemies, we're your allies. And I just want to let you guys know that we're just in this together. Thank you.
Um, so, um, can I get a, a motion to adjourn? Uh, Ms. Godfrey, can I get a second? Ms. Thompson, meeting adjourned. Have everybody have a good Thanksgiving. Hey, Tanya. Hello? It's yeah, there, there, there's no executive session tonight, so we just adjourned. All right, have a good night and um, have a good fall break. All right, bye bye. Yeah. <laughs>